Hi guys, uh, I'm in an Airbnb here in some messy dishes behind me um, in Austin, Texas, and I have nine minutes, and I'm gonna answer two questions in nine minutes here for the Daily Creative. If you're not sure what this show is, this is I'm a professional creator uh, and an entrepreneur, and I answer your questions, and we're it's a nice little community. We've got about 50 episodes under our belt. Check them out, 802-962-4357 if you want your call on the show. This is coming from, looks like New Zealand from Dan Under. Go ahead. That was Hi, Australian. Chase. Sorry. Um, silly question. It's William Payne from uh, Wanganui, New Zealand. Calling. William. Hello. Once you've decided what uh, field of photography you want to get into, say in my case, I want to do really high end stuff, like like what you did, basically. Okay. Once you decide what you do, you're working on your portfolio. You're doing personal work, getting you know work out there. How do you get over the 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 fear of actually approaching? potential clients, so to speak. Okay. Um, like, you know you can do the work, but you it's sort of like stage fright for a musician. Uh, how, how would you get over that aspect of it? I love it. Uh, thanks. All right. William, uh, your question is not just about photography. It could be about any subject, and the same, I, the same answer is what I would, I would prescribe. Um, one thing in there I want you to be careful with is, is like you know you can do it. I believe like that's important to have confidence and trust in your ability. Just remember the ability to do it when no one's watching and the ability to do it professionally at a high level are different things. So it's in a way this is the same answer like it's not just going straight from not doing anything to high-end clients. You just have to get in the arena. You have to be used to doing it professionally on a schedule with people watching and uh, that is the thing that's going to get you over the fear. And it's a little bit of you take small risks over and over and get comfortable and then grow that. It's a very, very simple concept uh, and yet it's so, I think, misunderstood. Um, musicians uh, play very, very small venues. They play a local coffee shop. They rarely, if ever, leave their like bedroom with jamming on their... Why oh, don't I just do that? I don't know. <laughs> it's like uh, Spanish flamenco guitar. No. They, most of the musicians that I know rarely go from like producing music in their, you know, in their basement in high school to an arena. There's, they, they grow over time. And so the same is true with any creative discipline or even the same is true in entrepreneurial endeavors where you are um, creating a product, uh, learning about the marketing of the thing, putting it out there, getting feedback, iterating you know, on, on some thing that you may have built. Um, a product or service online or whatever, you have to start. And the thing, most people that I see out there, they try and make it, is it the refrigerator? Most people that I know try and they go from, they try and go from zero to a hundred and then their ambition out way, or out, um, out what, out, their ambition is too big for their ability. What they really need to do is just start doing something small, but start tomorrow. Because planning for this like the gigantic coming out party where you're gonna launch your big photography business and go to high-end clients, that's just fiction. And the same is true with musicians, the same is true with building businesses and companies. Like start small. Airbnb, Joe Jebby was just on, uh, on Chase Travis Live on Creative Live, and he was talking about they needed money to offset their rent in their apartment and there was a conference coming to town. So was it in Austin? No, where was it? I don't remember. Yeah, South by Southwest. Yeah, and they, they rented like air mattresses on the floor of their apartment. So like it wasn't just this fully hatched idea and went from zero to a thousand miles an hour. And the same is true for you. So um, stage fright, fear, all those things they require, they're like, it's like a, a muscle. It's a muscle that you have to build over time. Um, you know, if you put nine women who are pregnant in a room, you can't have a baby in one month. So it's the same, the same thing applies. You have to put in the work, you have to put in the time, and it's that, that small act of creating, you know, start maybe doing work for a local business, um, you know, or or start doing it for yourself, and then when you feel confident in your ability and you think you can do it for someone else, do it for a local business and then a regional business, or get really good, become a big pit, big fish in a small pond, be the best person in your town, the person that everybody goes to for their fill in the blank. If you're a designer, to have their wedding imitations designed. If you're um, a entrepreneur to have uh, you know food delivered to your door in a small town that's probably not a very good idea that's a bad example strike that um, but you get the point right and 
it's it's the repeated pushing yourself a little bit harder, like taking a little bit more risk, um, and learning all along that actually makes you don't just you, you just that that's how big things happen. It's a thousand small steps. So um, I appreciate the question, and that's it has not if if you're not a photographer like William in New Zealand, it's everything I've just said applies to you anyway. I don't care whatever you're starting. There isn't anything. Do you guys know anything? Like, let's jam for a second. Do you guys know anything where you just go from zero to like world class overnight without like s s trying? Some, I mean, that's like you can't master anything, right? You can't master anything, and you can't um, let alone find someone who's willing to make a big bet on you uh, as a creator and entrepreneur if you're trying to get an investment. It just doesn't happen. So the only thing you can do wrong is not start. Uh, and starting something and doing is better than pontificating and doing nothing. Which, you know, and that's why when I started talking about your question, I heard in there, it's like, I know I can do it, which again is good, but knowing you can do it over and over and over and get a, you know, a replicable, replicable desired outcome, that is a different thing than just being able to take the picture or, you know, design the thing with someone looking over your shoulder. So, in summary, start today. All right. William, thanks again for calling in, man. Um, going to the second question today on the show. <clears throat> this is from Sue. Hi, Chase. My name is Sue Bell, and Hi, I'm Sue. pursuing a teaching career because I believe in education and youth. I do consider myself as creative. Having hearing a few of your episodes, Seth Godin, Brian Falls, and other, mm -hmm. I'm wondering, are there any universities that are training teachers for the kind of future you're talking about? Thank you. All right. Seth Godin and Brian Solis, those are, uh, Solis, I think, hi Brian, I've missed you bud, it's been a little while. Seth, same, same to you. Those are parts of the 30 Days of Genius series that we recorded, sitting down with 30 people like Seth and Brian and, and Ariana Huffington and Brene Brown and, and Richard Branson, Mark Cuban, you should check it out. CreativeLive.com slash genius, little plug there. It's an awesome series, 100% free. If you have not, I'm just... Again, creativelive.com slash genius. Go there, press the blue button. You get 30 interviews for free, one a day. It's amazing. Anyway, that's what um, Sue is referencing. And what I heard her question is, are there places where you can become a teacher um, for the kind of future that we're talking about? And the kind of future that I think, for those of you who are, this might be one of your early shows, um, the kind of future that I see is a world where we become, or education is more and more decentralized. That means it's not in necessarily universities, but rather where you get your products and services or at places like Creative Live or other online learning platforms. Um, it's, in the future, it's about the skills. No one cares where you became an expert. It doesn't matter. Uh, Ernst & Young, this really, really conservative, basically, accounting, um, accounting and auditing and all that stuff, like they don't even look at where people went to school anymore. They, know, they look at what the skills are. They don't, I think they actually do look at where you went to school, if you went to school, but they don't require a college degree to work there, which that's, it hasn't, it's, it's, that's been a truth for so long and now they just like, you know what, we realize it doesn't matter. Facebook, Amazon, all these places, it doesn't matter. They want to look at the work. It's more, that's why I love the, the, the creative influence is taking over the world. It doesn't matter. It's more of a portfolio model now than ever before. What have you built? What have you, what have you learned? Who have you learned it from? What was the experience? Um, where have you, you know, who do you admire? What are your peers? What research have you done? What, like, what, show me something. What work, what have you built, shipped, delivered? And are you proud of it? And what did you learn in the process? That's what a portfolio looks like. And if you can demonstrate that, people are going to be more willing to hire you. Now, qualifier, ding, 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 ding. If you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or things that need pieces of paper, I get it. You got to go to school. And in your case, Sue Bell, you were asking about going to school to become a teacher. I'm pretty sure that they want teachers to be certified and the certification needs um, a piece of paper. If you're going to work for a government or a private school um, in most of the places that I uh, that I know of in, in the West at least. So I, I want to qualify the answer to the question. I say, I, I lead with all that stuff because by and large, you might be able to make an amazing living and a life as a teacher on the internet about things that you know if you build a large community and you can help them learn, give back, ask nothing in return, and then 
you know, maybe create a community and, and create a living and a life and income for yourself by, by teaching this way. Um, but that's what Sue means when she's talking about the kind of world that we are talking about and envisioning. And specifically, she, uh, given that she was talking about, let's just take, for example, Seth Godin. He is the Alt MBA, which is a very expensive one month, I think it's 30 days, one month long um, class that is a very deep dive and it's very, um, it's very tactical, hands-on, project-based. Um, and it prepares you. It's, it's most of the things that like the traditional education is not. It's, it's all those things I listed. I think it's peer reviewed. Um, it's deep learning about subjects that you actually care about. Um, and you know, whether it's the Alt MBA or you know, Brene Brown has some classes you can get on her site or of course Creative Live. Um, all of those, like to me, that is what the future of most types of education looks like. I would encourage you, even if you have to go get a piece of paper to do the thing you want to do, doctor, lawyer, certified teacher, etc., that so much of what you can learn about the world is still in the doing. So what is your side hustle? And where are you getting the skills for your side hustle at one of those platforms I mentioned, like Creative Live? If like that is just an absolute, that's a piece of the future. And you're asking about the future that I'm, I'm delivering. And pieces of paper with a rubber stamp from an ivory, or a, yeah, a, a, a ivory building on a hill, and the building is covered with ivy and it's hundreds of years old and you have to pay 50 grand a year to go there, that's, it's just, it's not the future. Okay. The, some of those schools will survive, others are roll up, others are dying. You have to get this through your head that you have to own, you have to be responsible for your own education. Student debt is larger than credit card debt in our country. It's, I think it's $1.3 trillion. And that debt is the only debt that's not forgivable through bankruptcy. So it's a real shit sandwich unless you know what you want to do. Or if you don't and you can afford to spend that money and go experiment, it's college is a wonderful place. Now, I don't think, I'm not, I went to college and I'm not saying, I'm not being prescriptive and say don't do it. I'm saying be intentional. Decide what you're gonna do and, and whatever you are doing, you must supplement with, with online, with in-person, with um, internships with learning on the job like how can you actually touch and be around be a part of the community the thing that you care about so Ms. Sue Bell I hope that answers your question I do not know actual schools for actual teachers that are um, that are aiming to build a world that you are talking about but I do know that what I've just said is true fact so I hope that helps I want to say thanks for calling in um, if you're new to the show uh, and this is your first time you're going, oh wow, I can have my question answered on the show. Yes, you can. But just keep in mind, there are 50 other episodes, each of which have two questions. So there's already more than 100 questions out there in the universe. You should really start to listen to those episodes and I believe you'll get some value. I am most excited when you all share this. I want to say thank you for those of you who do and if you want your question on the show, all that stuff, you can call the number right here, 802-962-4, my posture, what's going on with that? 802-962-4357, signing off from Austin, Texas, where? I'm extremely thirsty.